scale is always more important than the energy source. But in terms of when we do destroy these cells, they don't die off right away. So the analogy I use for my patients is I say, look, when I go in there, I'm going to be targeting these abnormal AFib cells and I'm going to be destroying them, regardless of whichever energy source the doctor is using. But when you destroy these cells, some of the cells die off right away from the energy source that's destroying them. And some of them are damaged and they are dying, but they're not dead yet. And until they die, they could still wake up and send out abnormal electrical signals and cause an episode of atrial fibrillation. So it's not as simple as, oh, they did the procedure yesterday and starting today, I'll have nothing. Or, oh, I had an episode of AFib a week later, so they failed. No, that's not true. These cells need time to die off. Now, how long will they take to die off? Well, some of these abnormal cells can take a day, a week, or even a month or two to die off. But in general, they won't die off any more past about three to four months. So there is this so-called three month blanking period, which every electrophysiologist talks about, which is in that first three months, you really can't say anything for sure. And therefore, if somebody has a recurrence of atrial fibrillation within that first month or two, those cells might possibly have gone by month three. So you have to give it some time for these cells to die off. But past about three or four months, any AFib that wakes up past that point is something that survived the procedure. And so I would say that one of the ways you know whether or not you need another procedure is, are you having any more recurrence of atrial fibrillation past about three to four months because it takes three or four months for all the cells to settle down and create scar and then you'll know if there's anything remaining.